Is there a market for disabled goldfish? I've got a crack team of goldfish experts around the table today, and we're going to get into it for the next 20-ish minutes. Also, maybe a little bit of Moon Knight talk. Stay tuned. You're watching Fresh Ink. <laughs> First take. I think you nailed it. Yeah, right out of the gate. That was, that was perfect. Old one take Timmy over there. Um, I think I have a lower third. I'm Ian Ward. Hey, guys. Um, we're doing a little fresh ink. Moon Knight's coming out. We were excited about it. We were talking about it in the office anyway. We said, what if we just recorded this? I got that reference. Oh, yeah. This is the show. This, <laughs> this is the show. This, this is always, the show. This, this right here. Show. All week. This is the show. show. We were saying this is the show. show. Should be a show. With us today, we have Brian Compton and hey. Vanessa G over there. Uh -huh. They're going to have a lower third that's going to pop up right now. Ah! Oh, you'll love nice. to see it. You'll love to see it. I'm a fan. You watch Kevin do it long enough and it just rubs off. That's yeah. multiverse Kevin just theme. keeps rubbing off on everyone. And then, of course, we have moon expert Cass and Jay over there. Yeah. It says it in his lower third. So Thank you, Ian. Um, look, I hope you guys dig this. We were going to do this with or without the cameras being on anyways. Yeah. That's true. Um, guys, episode one of Moon Knight yeah. just dropped. Let's get into our first impressions right off the bat. What would you guys think? I loved it. Hot I damn. loved it. Hot damn. I have been dying for something that felt very tonally different in the Marvel universe. Yeah. Um, because I felt like so many of the IPs were basically just being put in the hands of traffic control. And it, it, you would get so much of that one-to-one -one that you were kind of like losing a lot of the, the creativity behind it. Like I haven't really seen anything like it since like Raimi or Taika Waititi or, or James Gunn were like, I can see that the people behind this are putting a lot of themselves like their own creative vision into it. And the fact that like from the first scene, I was like, this feels like horror. I was so into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's infused with something fresh mm -hmm. and it's non formulaic. Yes. I thought the first episode was, you know, first episode pilot episodes are a mm -hmm. monumental task, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We have so much to do. We have so to, set, to up set up the character. Mm -hmm. We have to set up some exposition, but we also have to get you invested in the show with a hook. Yep. And I, th I thought the execution of this was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I, uh, you know, I've been spending the last like three weeks reading almost every Moon Knight comic known to man. Yep. We're doing it for refreshing for the actual attack show. Mm -hmm. So I've literally just been in the Moon Knight pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so I kind of was, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little Moon, Di moon Knighted out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This brought me right back up. Too much Moon yeah. You're right back up. Moon Day yeah. right now. Hey. Yeah. Now you're back. No, I am 100%. Right. Like, I mean, like, you know, production aside, yeah. Oscar Isaac has it. He is doing my fellow Chapeens proud. <laughs> I, I now will get why my mother walks around. is just like, guess who's Guatemalan? Cause I've been doing the exact same thing. Oscar. But, Oscar. Oscar. We're so proud I, of you, mijo. I mean, talk, <laughs> also like, what an accent. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was kind of worried about it. I don't know why, because he's he is such a phenomenal wait, actor. Wait, wait, wait. Which accent? Just just in case someone happened. By the way, there will be heavy spoilers during this conversation. Yeah, it's probably general oh, right oh, now. Yeah. Guys, this yeah. is a spoiler show. There's a yes. lot of spoilers. And uh, instead of turning it off, just put us on mute because we'll just talk with our hands and we'll still be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to like subtitles button. for the hand Look, talking. Yep. Watch the so, show. Exactly. So often we're hamstrung by the fact that we can't get into the weeds. Yeah. Uh, it's spoiler territory when yeah. we're talking about the thing, the comics or the movies and TV shows that we're watching. This is for us. Yes. Okay? Yeah, this yeah. show is exactly what would happen if we were at our desks upstairs yep. prepping for the show and we get sidebarred conversation. And then this is just hopefully the cameras are on and just catching what we would normally yeah. talk yeah. about, which is spoiler heavy. Is there a potential that we could do this live, you think, Ian? I, I, I think we could. So I, I do have to do a little bit of YouTube business. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're trying out a, a different format for Fresh Ink. We communicate with our Reddit. We communicate with our Discord communities. This is something that people have been asking for. It's something that we love to do anyway. So, A, please like this please. video. Yeah. Drop a like for us. And comment below. If you would watch something like this live, if we were to go live with this and have kind of an interactive conversation with all the people who watched the episode late last night or very early this morning, uh, let us know. We'd love yeah. to do that if you're I'd love it. to rise and shine with you all. We would but love that. Of those accents, uh, I think we mean the uh, the I can't believe you've done this accent yes. that yeah. he has for uh, a good I majority can't of it. Tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. I'm from <laughs> London. <laughs> yeah. Oh, said okay. That. All right. Save it. <laughs> We're gonna have a segment of our favorite lines of the show. Uh, no, that's what, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a good um, 
Back to the impression, I thought, uh, once again, they knocked it out of the park. The accent was great. I thought it was very believable. I, I have seen a couple comments that were kind of nitpicky, but for the most part, people seem to be really sold on, yeah. Yeah. on his British accent. Um, and we're talking about Oscar Isaac as the Stephen Grant. Yes. Person. Yes. Okay, so right off the bat, let's talk about Stephen Grant. As a, Now, as you guys know, Fresh Ink, comic book show. Yep. yep. This is a comic book meets Disney Plus MCU uh, TV. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about the differences between what happens in the comics, maybe, and then what happens in the show, because we have experts, so yeah. why not, right? So, and I'm very curious to ask, because I think the only Moon Knight that I've read was the Mi Brian Michael Bendis arc, in which he's impersonating several other... Yeah, yeah, he's basically, yeah. in that arc, he's uh, hallucinations of Cap, Wolvie, and Spider-Man. Spider -Man, yeah. And he basically takes on essentially their not their powers but it's like i'm gonna get claws and i'm gonna yeah. have web shooters and he kind of it's known as the it's known uh colloquially as like the uh the the, the one man avenger the swiss army of yeah. that was my only touchstone for moon knight going into this it's it's fun it's which is park. one more touchstone than most people yep <laughs> right uh, part of part of what's cool about moon knight is no one really knows about moon knight yeah and this is there there's just a lot of mcu fans that are coming in that have no exposure to moon knight and for them this is their first time seeing yeah. the character understanding where what his origin is where where he comes from so we'll kind of tell you when things kind of differ from the comics versus what they do in the show the stephen grant character that i know from the comics um millionaire hollywood producer playboy. right yeah. He's playboy and that, and that's where we get a lot of the comparisons to dc's batman because it's kind of like the bruce wayne to the dark knight we have the stephen grant to the moon knight here um they went completely off the rails with that yes. story. Yeah. I was kind of expecting them to, because I feel like Marvel's answer to the Batman type character is T'Challa in right. terms of like the guy that has the money and the intelligence and, and, and the know-how. So yeah. I feel like Heck. it would be hitting that same button twice if they didn't pivot aggressively. Yes. And, and I think it gives it a, a great contrast between the two characters that he plays so far in the well, show. Well, and that's the other thing too, is we have not seen, cause you know, for those of you who have not read the comics, he has literally three different identities, you know, that you know, it's, he has yeah. a dissociative identity disorder in yeah. the comics, which is the right way of saying multiple personality yes. yeah. disorder, okay. which was incorrectly identified identified as schizophrenia in, the, in some of the earlier yeah. issues and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, in the comics, there's you know, Stephen Grant, Playboy millionaire, mm -hmm. Jake Lockley, who's essentially cabbie at night, which to use the Batman reference, if anybody knows who matches Malone, Malone is, Malone, is, that's kind of the identity yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, Batman or, you know, in this case, Moon Knight uses to kind of be close to the streets. Yeah. And then finally, his main, you know, identity, which is Mark Spector, who he truly is, uh, who's mercenary or ex-mercenary, ex-spook, ex-boxer, ex-marine, you know. Yeah, so 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 far we see uh, Stephen Grant mm -hmm. who works in a museum, mm -hmm. not just even in the cool part of the museum. The gift nope, shop. he works at the gift. The gift shop. <laughs> He's a gift shop. He sells gummies. Yeah, he sells gummies to kids. He's in the sugar trade, as yep. they say in the show. And his other persona that comes out in the episode is Mark Spector, and the two together are really fun. Yeah. I, I mentioned this before we started taping. It's it's giving me a little bit of Tom Hardy. In yes. Venom, there's like it's that good. fun yeah. play Meets off a little each United other. States of Terra. Yes, yeah, it, absolutely, yeah. and it's and it's so um, like Conchu calling him an idiot, and like there's Sweet. there's taking over. Yes, it's <laughs> so fun. Uh, I thought the action sequences um, were so well done. In the fact that we really didn't even see as much action because he kept we you know blacking out, becoming Mark Specter, and then he would wake up. Mm -hmm. As Stephen Grant with that was a great the, workaround to yes, a lot of so these things great. that were yeah. difficult to do. Well, yeah. It's leave it in your brain. Yes, yeah. it's get, letting us do the math and filling in some of these blanks because, like, it it gave me more than actually doing it because seeing him wake up and now he's covered in blood and everyone around him is just like face down on the ground. Yeah, it's cooler up here than yeah. any than any budget well, can give me. Yeah, and it's to say not to get too literary on it, but it also kind of evokes a little bit of the comic book situation when you have two panels. Most of the action takes place in between the panels where it's like here's the punch right here's the finish yeah your brain fills in that this is the same thing that's happening there your brain is filling in great point what yeah. goes on right there Versus great point manga, which is nine thousand pages of watching the actual <laughs> punch take place <laughs> that's right <Yeah. laughs> um okay so first impressions i think we're all in agreement mm -hmm. yeah. we loved it right i a lot well, well i'm sure we'll get to this but i will say it kind of makes me sad that like i like stephen grant as much as i, I didn't think i was going to like stephen i grant. love him yeah he's it's, relatable <laughs> so, uh, yes i'm like and also like i'm like oh wait like mark's the main character here yeah so you're just gonna get like 
pushed aside. I'm also yeah. thinking about how I'm going to like miss Stephen if something happens. Oh, Scotty. I think it's yeah. because so much of Stephen Grant, like you get the initial, like from the first few seconds, it feels like a horror movie. Yeah. But like when you're with Stephen Grant, it feels like British office humor. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, great. 100% yeah. does. Yes. When they're in the museum and his like boss is like Gone ribbing up. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, felt felt very officey, yeah. UK office. Uh, let's talk a little bit about big moments that <laughs> happened in this show. I, for one, uh, I mean, right off the bat, the biggest one that I remember first seeing was seeing the character played by Ethan Hawke. Okay, oh my God. now Mark uh, or this is Stephen wakes up as Mark was Mark Spector wakes yeah. up as Stephen in the grass. In the Swiss, I think it's Switzerland. Yeah. It's, it's giving it's supposed to be Switzerland, but I think it was yeah, yeah. Hungary. Yeah. Uh, anyways, wakes up in a field, has no idea how he got there. Stumbles into a little village, a town square, mm -hmm. where Ethan Hawke's character, who uh, spooky by the way. Yeah, that man doesn't phone anything in. Doesn't phone it in. <laughs> He's a big Eurythmics fan. Uh, he really likes walking on broken glass. <laughs> nice. That's a deep cut for yeah, the old folks nice. out there. Uh, that's the title song uh, or the, the title scene where he's putting glass in his shoes. Like those self-flagellators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually a Bob Dylan song, by the way. It's a Bob yeah. Dylan song. Yeah, yeah. Christian. I may have been too, a little bit on the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lennox Every in, right? grain of sand by Bob Dylan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Song. It, um, it set a tone pretty quickly. I will say yeah. that, that they 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 rocked it with this soundtrack. I mean, yeah, was, I loved the needle. Wham! <laughs> oh, when Wham comes in, uh, it, it come comes right after a, a scene where an old woman dies. You know, we're in for a treat. <laughs> but we also get an old woman giving him the finger too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Old women win in this episode. Oh, yeah. the old women elevator. <laughs> this, is a good, this is a good episode for the old gals. Yeah, the old gals, uh, three of them were cast. And who knows yeah. if they'll be cast in anything else ever again. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we see we see uh, Ethan Hawke's character using his cane to mm -hmm. judge uh, a couple people in the town square. It seems like there's some followers of whatever. He seems like a cultist figure. Yeah. They're on the town square and they're all gathered around him as he gives some sort of like, I don't know, like uh, some platitudes about uh, heaven and hell and, and this yeah. life and that life. It's a very Charlie Manson stuff. Very Charlie Manson. Heaven to earth. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The goddess Amet will help bring heaven to earth. The yes. god of the butterfly effect. Yeah. So, so far... In that scene, we see his character. Now, there's a lot of talk about him being the Sun King mm -hmm. leading up to this. I haven't seen anything yet that would reveal that he would be the Sun well, King. Well, I mean, in, if you go into the comics again, that's usually, I think it's the Max Bemis run. And it's, you know, they bring the Sun King in, which is sort of like an avatar of Ra. Yeah. Which, this is not Ra. This is Amet, which is the devourer of souls. I actually did a little, whew, again, going into that research thing. Great. Devourer Souls or Amet goes all the way back to like Conan comics from like the seventies, actually, yeah. which is, you know, is, uh, can canonical within yeah. the Marvel universe. Um, and yeah, so there's no way that it's, I hate to say, it, but like everyone did speculate that Arthur Harrow was going to be tied to that. I just don't see everyone so. being us too. We were like, I was fighting that one. Yeah. I was fighting that one. Yeah, yeah, I will yeah. say me. I was, Dude, I, I was a, a sun King conspiracy. I, I absolutely sure. was. Yeah. Okay. And especially because in the trailer, they played uh, uh kid Cuddy's day and night. So I figured uh, like oh, in the comics, yeah. Moon. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it, it, Day, makes, it makes sense. Raw. Yeah. So, um, I, I think that what we could see, and we'll get into the speculation, um, but I think we could see a sort of amalgamation of a, a bunch of gods, or it could just be an Amen only thing. Teeing off to maybe a sun god later. I, I, I think I think they'll hold off on it. I think it's like, you know, if you go yeah. back to like Doctor Strange, you know, they had Cassilius, who like, sorry, even super fans, like, who the hell is that guy? Sure. The Mads Mikkelsen character. I'm sitting here asking, who the hell is that guy? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. But then they have Dormammu kind of show up at the end. I think that they're not going to, they're going to want to save like the Sun King for like season two, or yeah. as, like something else like yeah. why burn out all your main characters like if you can get That's away with point. using this arthur harrow and his you know as an avatar of whoever ahmed is absolutely I feel like this is something they do in the series too that i've always enjoyed because then we end up getting anytime you take a character that's not necessarily known or precious and you get to work with that first you get to set a different expectation yes. it's why guardians worked so well because we didn't have any kind of like affection for that property or jessica jones when it came to like the purple man yeah. where it's like we get to do something else with something that's existed but people don't have like an idea of what it's supposed notion. to look yeah. like yeah, yeah, so yeah. then by the time you do the thing that they know you can take those creative liberties yeah yeah and i so far i think they've been doing that they've yeah. been doing a wonderful <laughs> job of that i will say um if i can tie in ahmet to arthur harrow there was a, a a line another big moment was when um arthur harrow 
meets Stephen Grant at the museum. Yes. And uh, he asks him if he knows who Ahmet was. And he's like, yeah, he's the wor- uh, world's first boogeyman. And he's like, well, you know, said something about a really nice analogy about weeds. Would you wait for weeds, weeds to grow up? In to the grow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he said, you know, if if it was up to Ahmet, there would be no Hitler. And then right there, because I read Arthur Harrow's first appearance. Moon Knight number two, volume two. That's right. Uh, Arthur Harrow was a character in the comics who was a uh, doctor mm-hmm. who was half par- who had a half paralyzed face, constantly in pain, who was running experiments, uh, continuing the work of oh. Nazi doctors and scientists. Yep. Oh, like a Dr. Bengel. Bing- did- yeah. It was, it, was down, it was down in South Bengel. America. Yeah, yeah. Down yeah. in South America. Yep. And he was using humans to uh, continue his research and essentially was either a Nazi or very close to Nazi adjacent. Mm-hmm. And so it was funny to see Arthur Harrow in the show retconned to be like an anti. Yeah, he was like, yeah. no, he's like, we could have killed Hitler, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like anti that but it keeps it in that same circle of like i'm a guy that's essentially like eugenics hell yeah <laughs> yeah yeah pretty cool right <laughs> i really love to see what and how the writers resolve a lot of the things you know that's kind of the fun yeah. in this you yeah. know like how would they do that do they even feel like they have a need to do that and it's kind of fun to see that the writers um are doing a little bit of research yeah. at least in the characters and finding well, fun well, ways to the head writer steven Sl- no jeremy slater yeah. had adapted umbrella academy oh. and it's very much that kind of thing where it's like you could see that in his pedigree he could tell what do i take what's the things that are like essential and then what are the things that i could take a liberty with that's more interesting yeah. on television versus a comic book angle yeah right I think also it's just a matter of like, they just don't want to burn out some of the better stuff for later. I mean, if you can get away with, Hey, Ethan Hawke's a big name by itself. You don't need to rely on, you know, whatever. You know, it's like, yeah, burn this guy out. Who was in one issue. Right. Yeah. Like, let's put it this way. The organization he worked for in the comic had an, 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 uh, like uh, an acronym was like Omnium. Omnium. Yeah. They never established what that is. Like it's never been brought up again. It's It's so fun. Like just get rid of it. It's like, Hey, we can burn this one out. No big deal. We've got plenty of other people to come to, you know what I mean? That's great. Ian, do you have any big moments? I do. I, I, I'm i going to go to my favorite line from, oh, okay. show, which I also think is like heavy foreshadowing. Okay. Well, it was a very like, hmm, moment for me when, when Stevie is going to the London Museum and he's- Stephen with a V. Talking with that little girl and she says, did it suck for you getting rejected from the field of reeds? Yeah. Ah. It's like, what the hell? Like, what? Who is this little girl? Yeah. I'd have to be dead, but I'm not dead. Yeah. It was very much like a, is he? Is he dead? Right. Totally. Yeah. I mean, if if we are to go back to the origin of Moon Knight in the comics, uh, Mark Spector dies at the foot of the statue of Khonshu. Yep. Yeah. And he's resurrected um, by Khonshu. And then because he's resurrected, he is now the fist of Khonshu, the, the living avatar, mm-hmm. because Khonshu can't take human form. Um, so he has Mark Spector as Moon Knight do all of his... His bidding. You know, it's funny in that scene, um, because I'm, I'm Egyptian. I, I, I also enjoy, uh, a lot of the history of Egypt and stuff like that and controversy surrounding the pyramids when she's putting the trash in there and she's like, Oh, there's nothing in there, which is one of those things, you know, because people go like, well, they aren't tombs, not a single, like, what yeah. are the pyramids? Pe- people still don't know. Right. And we're going to get into some conspiracy cast here. Oh. But I'm, oh. But I'm, but I'm just Illuminati saying, confirmed. I'm just saying, I think what they're doing by that, by giving that little girl that comment is like, uh, yeah, a lot of people think the, the pyramids don't have a use and they're just empty and they, there's like not a whole. And that's where you get a lot of people saying, no, they're power plants and this and that. But uh, that's for a separate podcast. <laughs> I'm just saying, I see you, Disney Plus. I see yeah. what you guys are doing. You're giving these little girls these lines. Um, that's but, a lot out to the director, too. Mohammed yeah. Abi- oh, what was it? Mohammed Diab. And he's very much said, like, coming into this show, he wants to show, like, Egypt and specifically the Cairo that most of Hollywood doesn't. They, that they put, like, the yellow filter, the, like, everyone is still in the desert riding a camel. Well, it's and like, he's whenever like, you see the pyramids, it's like, oh, it's yes. forever to get there when, actually, if you reverse you turn it, around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I want to show you what exists to the literal left of the pyramids. Yeah. It's it, it, it's so great that yeah. uh, we, uh, I didn't know that about Muhammad yeah. being uh, Egyptian. That's fantastic. The, the whole horror aspect being kicked off by Moon yes. Knight is so exciting to me. Yeah. I love Ghost Rider, I can't wait for Blade. Cool. Oh, I mean, I know you're pumped for uh, potential Midnight Suns. I mean, I mean, it just sounds like they are just laying down the bridge, you know, the yeah, exactly, and down the track. Okay, one of the biggest moments in the show, the suit. 
the reveal, right? Yes. They teased us all episode. They just kept leading us along. To to that end, I'm actually I'm I'm, I'm very happy they did, but I'm actually surprised they did do the reveal in the first episode. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like and and kudos to them. And yeah. what a way to do it. It's like, hey, here it is in all its glory. Here you know? it is, right in your face, right in camera. If they didn't do that, would you have liked the episode as much, you think? I think so. I think so. I think because uh, so much of episode one was like giving us these small pieces to put together, yeah. that if they didn't give me the suit, then that would have just been something else that yeah. would have been like yeah. speculating I, on. I don't think we're going to need as much. I think maybe in the second episode, we'll see a little bit more of it, but they're going to still kind of like be real tight with like, because it's still Stephen Grant's show for the time being. Yeah, right? we know? haven't met Mark yet. So they're giving us, it, it's very much like a trickle of information, but at the same time, I'm not like, dying for any of it because yeah. I'm loving putting all the pieces together. I loved the way they revealed the suit. I loved how um, sort of like whimpering Stephen Grant was, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm about to die. I'm about to die. He's hiding in a bathroom. And then Mark Spector, his alter ego, his other yeah. personality, who's so calm, so assured, mm -hmm. telling him, I will save us. Just let me. Just let me take and control. I get goosebumps thinking about it. And then, you know, the the full cost. I love how they reveal that you start to see him get wrapped up. They cut out of the bathroom. You start to see the, the battle take place. Then you see the, the little jackal come out. And <laughs> then it reveals Moon Knight just beating the absolute ass out of him. <laughs> to that end, too, I'm curious because Marvel's been very good about like trying to tie everything to like a scientific explanation. Like Thor, like, you know, the Asgardians are just advanced aliens, at yeah. least in that, you know, like Doctor Strange, you know, it's he's tapping into some energy that's elsewhere. It's not like, you know, you know, they do, you know, whatever. Right. This is kind of like the first time we're actually really seeing something supernatural. Yeah, it's yes. mystical. And, uh, mystical. And yeah. like, I wonder if it will be or if they're going to go, you know, or if they were like, you know, we don't need to worry about that science stuff anymore. We can do mysticism. We can Honestly, do Ragnarok is proof of that. Ragnarok is proof that we do not need the science and we do not need the explanations. Like this is a universe in which a talking raccoon is smarter than a talking tree yeah. i do not need i do not need no, any of the workarounds on, give me magic on that score it's time for rampant speculation oh okay it's time for rampant speculation what do we think is coming what are we most excited for what do we have no proof of but we think would be really freaking cool well i'm gonna say something here oh no oh shit i'm gonna say i'm mad at ian Okay. Oh, oh, yes. I, know I am mad at Ian because I know where this is going. Because I can't even look at him right now. We have all seen the first episode. Yes. Yep. Ian got screeners for the first four episodes. Uh huh. I can neither confirm nor deny if that's true. I wanted us to all be on the boat together. I w I stayed up until midnight. You stayed up till midnight. Yep. I watched it last yesterday uh, yep. because I had a screener. <laughs> and then I watched it again this morning at 6 a.m. Am I the only one that didn't get to see the screener? Well, bro, bro, I had to watch it. Uh, I, well, I don't know if I should out oh, you. <laughs> let's just halt that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so essentially, uh, you know too much. And I want to address the elephant in the room. There is no way I'm going to let you spoil anything for me. I want you out of this speculation. Wait talk. until you hear about. Yeah, <laughs> you, you are tainted, my friend. The camera just I, cuts to you, Moon Knight, beaten down on Ian. Single red yeah. dot. I'm like, <laughs> Kevin, no! <laughs> that being said, if we would have gotten the first four, we probably would have watched it. Yeah, 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 big time. <laughs> uh, and there's You'd a lot of folks on to. YouTube that have watched the first four. Uh, th this show is, not, we are not getting into that. I have no idea what happens in episode two. If you are just watching it week to week like we are, this is your show. I'd honestly rather watch it week to week because there's so many informations that are giving us like given to me in a trickle feed that I want a week to sit with it. I want a week to put things together. I want a week to like ruminate because like there were things that I loved about it last night that I'm realizing I loved even more this morning. Like yeah. there, yes, through a lot time of stuff, a lot of moments through grow digesting. On you, there's, sure. there's so many moments where I'm like, wow, I loved it in the moment. But now that I'm thinking about how much Oscar Isaac really does look like two different dudes when he's talking to himself yes. really based know. on how he carries himself, yes. based sure. on how he speaks, how like right down to like the expression on his face. I like that. This is a show that I can digest and unpack for a week and then not rush to the next thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too, is like for all of Ian's getting maybe may or may not have seen everything. 
He's got to, if he has, he's got to wait four weeks. My life is ruined. Yeah, you're ruined. <laughs> I've destroyed my, my own forget. happiness. How's your ball of wax, Icarus? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fall back down to earth. Um, okay, so speculation. I mean, I this is, this is I think, an easy one. I don't think we're going to see, if anybody knows, there's the Mr. Knight costume. There's, yeah. The, yeah. there's the traditional Moon Knight costume, which is the big cape, all that. Yes. There's a secondary costume. There's actually a third, too, but there's a secondary costume where it's him in a very nice pressed white suit with a white mask. We've seen the images of yeah. it. We know the suit is coming. I don't think we're going to see that until the final episode. I think that's going to be like, okay. Bold, I, bold take. I, I like that one. I, I, like I, that. I think it's a pretty easy. I think it's pretty easy to assume that because like we haven't even seen much of this costume. They're going to want to develop it, see it yeah. for a bit. And I think the last thing is like, okay, I finally come together. I got my crap together, and here we go. That's great speculation. I think they want us to have fun with the Moon Knight that yes. we saw in this at the end of this first yeah. ep. First. Um, also, anytime a character gets a new costume, it's it's sort of a beat change for the character. Yes. Yeah. It's a new. It's it, it's exactly what you said. It's like, oh, now I got my S together. Yep. I know what I'm doing. Yep. Let me just put on this tie. I'm like, you know, buttoned up. I think that's a great. I think that's a great. I, I think it's. I think it's a safe one though. I mean, like, yeah. you know, but that's. Uh, all right. I think because we got the costume so early in the first episode, we're going, we're going to go back to like more questions, more flashbacks, yeah. more putting the pieces together. The other sides of those phone calls of people that he like, can't seem to recognize yeah. in episode two, I think because they gave us the costume so quickly, they're going to like walk back some of that information and just give us a few more questions before they start answering anything else. Totally. I, uh, to your point, I think, and this is just speculation. I, I don't think there's a mom on the other end of that phone oh, call. Nope. Those, okay. are, those are all voicemails he's leaving. Those are all yep. voicemails. He's talked to, uh, I mean, he talks to his goldfish in the beginning. Yep. He talks to the statue at the park. Yep. He talks to his mom oh. on the phone. And so that that's a real quick with the, uh, the, the, uh, the dude who's the, the guy in gold. Yeah. I, this is, this is speculation. This is wild speculation. Wild speculation. Yeah. That's not that. Um, in the comics, there's a couple of allies that he has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Fr uh, Frenchie Duchamp, who we see a little Easter egg of that in the phone. Um, Marlene, his girlfriend, who I do not believe is Layla. Um, right. there's also two other people. It's Gina. She works at the diner that he would kind of frequent when he was like the, the cabbie. Yep. And there's also like, a, 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 a for lack of a better word, a bum that would kind of give him information on the, on the, the DL. Seems Crowley yep. looks awfully similar to that. You pointed guy. that out to me yesterday. Yeah. He does look very ah. similar to Crowley. Like long stringy hair. And it would yeah. make sense. This dude's a, Works on the street, you know, maybe he just keeps his ear to the ground. Right. Who knows? Yeah. Um, anyway, who, that's, that's a little speculation. I, I love that, and I haven't seen or read that anywhere. Uh, who is Layla, do we think? Do we have an idea of who Layla is? Because she's not from a moon, the Moon Knight story in the comics. No, no. She is, like, the only real Layla character in Marvel Comics is Layla Miller, and that's from X, X Factor. Men. Exactly. And that's that little girl at the museum. Yeah, maybe. X-Men <laughs> confirmed. Um, you yeah, shut up. You've seen the first four. You cannot speak. We do. So the whole thing with Layla is that in, in I believe it's Arabic and Jewish, her name means knight or daughter of the knight. Uh, uh, just saying. I love this, yeah, guys. I, I love it. I feel like, as you guys could probably watching this can tell, we can go for a lot longer. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and we, we could if you want. We just need you guys that are watching to let us know what you think. I want to know what you guys think of the actual show. Leave it in the comments below. Please go to our Reddit, our Discord. Um, it's a great place for you to connect with us, connect with each other. Um, it's been our goal to do a long form fresh ink for a long time. And your guys' support means the world to us. So if you throw us a like, leave us a comment, it goes a long way. And we're going to be doing this every week. Next week, uh, GB Golden Boy will be here. Hey. Hey. You're going to see, be seeing him at this table uh, every week. Um, we're going to be going every Wednesday morning or afternoon by the time this goes up. Um, and it's our goal to be, you know, one of the people that helps you and walks you through this Moon Knight series, which so far has been killer, a killer yeah. first episode. I've adored Loved it. it. That steak Loved scene. Um, with that being said, me and my Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night 32, say goodbye to you and we'll see you next week, next Wednesday. So long. I'll have the best bit of steak. Shut up. You've seen the first four. <laughs> Ooh, I hate so that. when Magneto comes in in episode. No. no!